Psalms 34. The Bible says, when you come into the house of the Lord, draw near to here. Otherwise, you give the sacrifice of fools. Psalm 34. I'm going to be reading verses 3 to 4. And here is the word of God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Don't make God small by making your problem big. The size of God is relative to the size you give to your problems. When we worship the Lord, we minimize and shrink the problems. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. The psalmist says, I sought the Lord in this atmosphere. And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. This is a day I want to speak to you about the difference between a problem and a fear. A problem is real. A fear is based on your experience and your negative anticipation. It produces apprehensions and phobias so that in the middle of a blessing, you may not even know that you're blessed. The psalmist says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord in the day of pure worship and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Can you say amen? The New Century Version says he saved me from all that I feared. Father, this morning, we will be lying if we say we don't have fears. We will not be speaking the truth if we do not admit that we have apprehensions based on where we're coming from. The bad news that we hear the tendency of how things go wrong. But today, in this atmosphere of pure worship, we are seeking the Lord. That you will hear us and deliver us from all our fears. Have them conquered all our problems. We are also delivered from all our fears. How can these things be? Except for the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we bless you that you give us access to the Father. We worship your majesty. Let everyone be blessed day, being delivered from all our fears in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Had it not been for the ministry of Grace Chorale and instrumentalists and those that can lead in worship. How can we magnify the Lord? How can we exalt his name? They make it so much easier for us to get to the point where our seeking the Lord takes us to the place where as before we speak, he hears us. Whilst we're yet constructing our sentence, he said, done. And then he goes beyond that and delivers us from all our fears. This morning, I want you to consider with me the fears that we incubate. The fear of failure. And when I say the fear of failure, I'm not talking just about examinations that some of us are sitting. Because many of us are afraid of economic failure. Many of us are afraid of marital failure. Many of us are afraid of career failure. And what the psalmist is talking about is not God solving my problem. But also delivering me from my anticipations, my apprehensions and my phobias. For instance, when we hear that a man of God tragically passes away in a private jet maintained not like the commercial planes of Nigeria 
The next time you want to fly on commercial planes, some people will cancel the trip. It is a fear. When we hear all kinds of things, when we think of 2015, there is fear. We have the fear of incurable diseases. And that's why many people here have never been for a health complete check before. Nigerians say, I don't want to hear bad news. Listen, you don't have to hear it. You may already have it. But if you hear it, you may be able to manage it. You see, I lost everybody there. Because this place is full of Nigerians. The fear of the future. Can I get a witness? Do we have the fear of the future or not? Because they say we, nobody knows what the future holds. The fear of death. That's Nigerian. There is no other group of people that fear death like Nigerians. When they hear, hey, 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 hey. Nigerians will not even say, what happened? They start running. You hear a gunshot, people jump over the fence and that's what kills them. The fear of death. What about the fear of poverty? Can I tell you something? The people that fear poverty the most are rich people. He's not poor people because he that is down needs fear. That's why when we make a collection for like the organ, the poor man on the average gives more than the rich man. Let me explain that. If a man has 5,000 in his account and gives 1,000, he has given 20% of everything he has. No rich man gives 20% of what he has. Whilst you are laughing because you are not rich yet, may the Lord make you rich <laughs> and deliver you from the fear of poverty in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, you, can, you see, you can be rich but poor in your heart. You know, when some people that have money spend money, you would think that they are servant to their money. Some rich people cannot enjoy it because they are afraid of the money finishing. Somebody say fair. Some of us are here, we're afraid of a heartbreak. Maybe you're a lady or you're a gentleman, somebody likes you and you're not responding, not because you don't like the person. But because of the records of heartbreak, you cannot love again. And even when you say you fall in love, can you help me with the noise behind in the background? Can you help me, somebody? Even when you say you love, guess what? You're loving and you're carrying a parachute. Do you know what I mean by that? Somebody is involved with you, but they have the key to the back door. They never drop it. Hello? Hello? Am I in the right place? The fear of heartbreak. You know, love is total. I told you on, was it on Sunday or Wednesday, about that song about Whitney Houston. Yeah. I'm saying, and you're thinking, Pastor Whitney Houston. My love is your love. I love that song. It says, when time is finished, and the Lord will ask me, how did you spend your life? He said, I will tell the Lord, I spent my life with you. Matabule. I told my wife, I will fall in love with a woman who speaks like that. It don't even matter if she's fine or not. She's made up her mind. Huh? No, no, I'm not. I'm just preaching. <laughs> the fear of home going <laughs> is the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> but I was playing a song with you, and I said, I said to her, I said, "This is the kind of person I want to be." It's not a question of whether I'm that person yet, but this is the kind of person I want to be. If the Lord were to ask me, how did I spend my life? I want to be saying, I spent my life with you. Because I harbor no fear of heartbreak. I'm a pastor. I join people at the altar. If I were to ask them, a lot of people can answer that question. You commit to spending your life. This summer. 
But the fear of heartbreak. A lot of us go into marriage and we're wearing a parachute. And your spouse does not have any. Because he thinks that we're in this together. Hello? The plane do like this. Pa. You leave your spouse in there. You won't even let him piggy ride. Say, let's manage one parachute. No, like, don't, don't, don't. It's too risky. It's too risky. You stay. Hello, somebody. Somebody say fear. When people do that, please don't think they're bad. They are victims of fear. The fear of a job loss. And that's why some people cannot stand up for the Lord on their job. They're so afraid that if I say I'm a Christian, they may sack me. On Wednesdays, it is one out of five people that will show up in church. And I asked the question, why don't you come to church on Wednesday? I said, my job. I said, but the Muslims go to pray during work hours on Friday unapologetically. We have our service at 6 p.m. when your office is well and truly supposed to be closed. So what is the problem? They do it during office hours. We do ours after office hours. And check any mosque on any Friday. It is full to the brim. And check any church in Nigeria. Any midweek service, you get one quarter of the congregation. The fear of a job loss. And that's why Christians boot leak when they get to their office. That's why Christians will not stand up for what is right. Because we're victims of fear. The fear of old age, the fear of the unknown is with us. But the psalmist said, oh magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. When I sought the Lord. The theme for my sermon this morning is, is when I sought the Lord. Things began to change. Can I tell you the truth? The world is saying to you, don't spend too much time with the Lord. The life will leave you behind. You will not make it. You will not have money. You will not, you will not be accomplished. But that's not the truth. The promise is, as I sought the Lord. He heard me. Concerning my troubles, he solved my problems. And, which is conjunctive to the previous, he heard me and he went further and delivered me also from all my fears. Can I tell you something? Most of us, the nightmares we have is indicative of what we're truly afraid of. Many of us are afraid of witches. Who they pursue you when they sleep? No be witch. Some people say, Pastor, masquerade is chasing me. When you were a little boy, were you not afraid of masquerade? The fear of the unknown. May the Lord deliver us from all our fears in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says fear has torment. Can I tell you, you can be in the best marriage in the world, but you're not enjoying it because the fear of a heartbreak, the fear that the person will leave will so color your judgment, you will not even know love when you see it. And many of us are the ones who spoil what God gives us because of the root of fear. For instance, I, I taught you, I said God is more the God of opportunities than God of blessings. If you say you want a child, he, she will give you an opportunity to have a good time with your husband. And that will produce a child. He does not give you a child. He gives you an opportunity to have a child. God does not manufacture money. He does not. That's forgery. He will give you an opportunity to make good money. But if you are so risk averse, can I go there? Risk aversion means that you play safe all the time. You can never make significant progress in life without taking some amount of risk. But when my risk is ensured in the word of God, it is really no longer a risk. Hallelujah. It is no longer a risk. So many of us are suffering from torment. Because the Bible says in the book of 1 John, fear has torment. And it means that fear really torments.
torments people. And so what the psalmist is saying is God delivered me from a life of torment. Can I, can I tell you something? People that have suffered uh, maybe they hired somebody who stole their money or they, 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 they married somebody or they went to a relationship and the person was a constant cheat. You know what happens to them? They live in torment. You know what? How? Tell me how. If somebody has always had thieves, they always stole your money in your office or maybe your relationship, you find that they cheat. What is the kind of torment that kind of person is subjected to? Anybody? It is a life of suspicion. The person that is suspicious has no peace. When you should be sleeping, you are checking phone, checking a computer, you are having a headache, somebody says hello, your heart jumps out of your mouth. It is torment. Behold, he gives his beloved sleep. And when you don't sleep, you wake up cranky. And when you're cranky, your love begins to move away from you. And that is the beginning of a separation. Okay. The place is quiet. May the Lord deliver us from our fears. And can I tell you the truth? It is proven that only about 30% of our fears will ever have any experience close to coming to pass. It is a scientific thing that what people fear, the most that can happen is about 30% of it has any chance of happening. And all your life, you're afraid of what may never even happen. Can I tell you the truth? If God is blessing you now, and there's joy in giving, but you don't give. How many of you know that people that don't give, you have missed a part of life? There is joy in giving. And it does something more for the giver than the one that is giving. Can I tell you why? Because when you are not hungry and you give food to someone that is hungry, the food makes no difference to you. But the feeling that you get renews your life and extends your good health. I can see some people say, lie, lie, I will never give. Lie, 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 lie. I'm not raising an offering. Help me tell you, about, he's not raising an offering. Say, relax, relax. Keep your money. Keep your money. It's fine. Glory to God. Let me read this full scripture and you understand what I'm saying. I'm going to read Psalm 34 and I'm going to be out of here. Verses 4 to 10. Let's start from verse 3. Start from verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Read with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Say amen. amen. Bible says they looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. Say amen. amen. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him, come on now, out of all his troubles. Say amen. amen. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers us. Amen. amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. A round of applause for the Lord. And verse 10, verse 10. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. I want you to go home with the blessing of AGT, any good thing. It says those that seek the Lord. The title of my sermon is When I Sought the Lord dot 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 means some things happened after that but those that seek the Lord even though lions that have strength the king of the jungle suffers quite shock but those that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing hmm. my question is will you seek the Lord the seeking I'm talking about is not the distracted one. 
is not the one after about 30 minutes in church, you begin to check your WhatsApp. The worship I'm talking about is not the one that your phone is on silent and is vibrating in your pocket. I'm talking about shutting out the world and giving the Lord your best. Amen. Amen. How many of us would like to be married to a lady and on your romantic night, you're getting down with your business and in the heat of all that, she's checking her phone. That's what you do. When we worship the Lord, it's a very intimate thing. The fact that our mind wanders, think about it. Your husband is checking his email when you're groovy. Hello, somebody. Someone say groovy. If you're not married, close your ears. <laughs> Praise God. Some people are so old, they're not the groovy anymore. <laughs> Me, I'm going to groovy with my wife till I'm 100. Even if I need a little assistance, I'll get my assistance. Benny, my children here, shut your ears. How do you think you came into the world? <laughs> Glory to God. This clap, you're clapping. I'm going home with my wife. I want to read in closing Jeremiah 29 from the Message Bible. I have it in a slide. Can you bring up the slide, Jeremiah 29? It's abbreviated. You're still grooving. Till 100. She said till 60. Oh, you are 60. You have 40 more years of grooving. And you're already a grandmother. Ah, oh Leo. <laughs> All right, I close with Jeremiah 29, verses 13 to 14, abbreviated. For quick understanding, I read, it says, When you come looking for me, says Jehovah, you will find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me, and you want it more than anything else, I will make sure you won't be disappointed. It says, then I will turn things around for you. It says you can count on it. Stand to your feet. When I sought the Lord, can you bow your heads in prayer with me? The word of the Lord has come saying to us how we ought to seek the Lord. It says, when you come looking for me, you will find me. Yes, when you get serious. I want you to pray about getting serious with the Lord. When you get serious about finding me and you want it more than anything else, then I will make sure your seeking me will not be disappointed. It says, then I will turn things around for you. You can count on that. Why didn't you take a little time and say, Lord, I've not been as serious as I could be. I have not given as much time as I could. Why didn't you tell the Lord, I want to start all over with you? Because then you will deliver me from all my fears. When nobody's looking, I will be worshiping. Come on now, pray and say, Lord, my prayer life is in shambles. I don't come to church as often as I could. I want to change. My attention in church is not total. Speak, Lord, for your servant hearers. In the day that God speaks to you, what do you say in response to the Lord? I sought the Lord, the psalmist said, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I sought him in worship. I sought him in obedience. I sought him in meditation. I sought him by engaging in good works. 
I sought him by serving God with my life. And he did not disappoint me. My fears, Job said, what I feared has come upon me. This is your chance today to be delivered from the things you fear. Is it a breakdown of your health? Is it your marriage that you're worried about? Is it financial stagnation that you're afraid of? I want you to pray, say, Lord, as I seek the Lord, please deliver me from the things that haven't happened but I'm afraid of. Concerning my children, a lot of us are afraid. Will my children turn out right? Will they do well? I want you to commit it to God in prayer. I say, Lord, I will seek you with all my heart. And you will take care of my children. My children, all my children shall be taught of the Lord. And great will be their peace. The Lord will be their portion in the land of the living. As I seek the Lord, the Lord will promote my children. They will not be the tail, they will be the head. They will never be under, they will be on top only all the days of their lives. The lines will fall for them in goodly places. The covenant of the servant of the Lord will do my generations well. As I seek the Lord. Is there someone here this morning that you came to church? But you just came as you normally come. But today you feel, I want to draw closer to the Lord. I want to have an encounter with the Lord. I want to commit my life to Christ. I want to go beyond where I am. If you're such a person, I want to pray with you. I'm going to ask you to come to the altar. And come and join hands with me and let me pray with you. That this resolve in your heart the Lord will honor it and give you the grace to walk worthy of the Lord. That you will not be a backbencher anymore. You'll be hot for the Lord. And the Lord will show up in the situation and the circumstances of your life. If you're such a person, I have a short time. I want to pray with you. Just come towards me. Wherever you are, you just want to commit yourself wholly to God. God bless you, my brother. God bless you.